This is Spencer with the Not MacGuffin, original. and today I'm joined by Gillian Robespierre, is that right too? That's correct. And Jenny Slate Hi. from the movie Obvious Child, a, I don't know, what would you describe it as a subversive comedy, I guess is what I'm hearing, the term. That, uh, that's about, a word we throw around sometimes. It's a nice word, I like it, it's a respectable word, about a uh, girl who has a one night stand and then sort of the complications that come out of that. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is, it's my understanding this was actually based on a short. Um, what was that experience like and how did that ultimately influence this film's production? It was a great experience. Yes. Um, we made it in the winter of 2009, shot it in four days. Jenny was in it. She played Donna Stern. But it was a small movie. It's a, it was 20 minutes long and um, not too many people watch short films. But it did really well for a short. It went to a couple of film festivals. We played on a rooftop in New York. And uh, it got um, written about by a lot of blogs that I really enjoy reading. Bust, Jezebel, Feministing, Slate, all these great publications started um, linking the movie to their site. And it ignited a conversation that was really fun to watch unfold and uh, encouraged me to sit down and uh, scratch together a feature. And for you, uh, Jenny, what, what was it about this that um, attracted you to the role? I mean, I know you've done a lot of comedic work, a lot of it very good. Um, what, what about this? I mean, because this definitely has comedic elements, but it definitely takes it um, to much more, um, I don't know what you want to call it, real, dark, honest place, I guess. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, what was that like for you? Oh, Someone yeah, who's oh. known for being comedic. Um, Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thank you. I'm fine. Okay. Um, it was exciting. Yeah, I love doing comedy. Um, but I, the same place that my comedy comes from, my, my other expression comes from as well. And it's a place of wanting to be really honest and open and um, wanting to do characters that uh, can be expressed you know, in that way and really fully. And there's a lot of work in comedy that for me is really fun, um, but it hasn't had those still moments and those more tender moments. So um, it was very exciting. I, I felt ready for it and uh, that I, I had waited a really long time um, for it. But for me, I mean, the reason why, in general, in the first place, I wanted to do even the short, and I didn't really, I didn't know Gil, we just, we met because she came and saw my stand-up. The reason why I wanted to do it was because of the comedy, was because it was really, really funny, and um, I hadn't read comedy written for a woman to play that was that unique before. How much were you involved in terms of crafting this character was and how much of this I guess should say is you know unscripted versus improvised because it feels I guess natural it feels like you're not really playing you know it's not like you're like a, a captain on a ship to go to Mars where it's sure. something like completely out of the realm of possibility it felt like something that's a real person behind it so well, that's a great compliment I think when yeah. people say it feels um, it totally improvised and natural and I, I, I think it's wonderful yeah it's also a great compliment for Gil's writing because the movie is the script that she wrote and I'm lucky enough that she wrote it for me and um, you know we're we the character Donna is supposed to be a person that you might know she speaks like a person you would run into. And that was really important for us. And I think a lot of times people think the most natural thing would be to just completely improvise and not have a script. But I think for people who are funny and want to be funny, they can get a little bit competitive and even athletic about it and sacrifice the character for the good joke. And what we have in our film and what I'm really proud of is that there's a very funny script that we focused on and, and, worked hard enough to make it seem um, as natural as possible. It, it comes across. Okay. Um, in terms of like the actual production, I, I saw you guys had like a Kickstarter. That seemed like that was mostly like either paying off expenses or paying off editing or whatnot. Um, what was it a like in terms cocaine. of... A lot of cocaine. Yeah, well, I mean, that's <laughs> a standard staple. Um, <laughs> but what was it like in terms of the production? Because, I mean, without giving away too much of the movie, I mean, it does touch upon some controversial aspects that seem like that might 
turn some people off from investing in it or whatever. I mean, was it something that you could find a, a niche of people that are like, we really believe in you, we're going to give you the money, or was it just crowdsourcing? Or how exactly did that come to fruition? Because it, it, it is a very bold choice in terms of a story to tell. Yeah, I think we went the uh, traditional route that you know you, you one goes through to uh, put together money for a low-budget independent feature. We have investors, um, and we were surprised and excited that no nobody slammed the door in our face. People were, wanted this story to be told, and we're excited to help out. And so we do have the traditional like investors. Who, who came on board after reading the script and seeing the short. Then we also went through a bunch of fun grant process. <laughs> Writing grants is not fun, but um, we, we won a couple of great grants from Rooftop Films, San Francisco Film Society, um, IFP. Just people were really excited about this story and about seeing Jenny play Donna. So, um, no, you know, nothing too crazy happened and kickstarter was just like a little icing on the top which we needed for, for finishing the for, the for finishing right. a ton of drugs and all of my toupees yeah <laughs> and <laughs> my penthouse apartment's not going to pay for it right i mean those are expensive but you need them of course <laughs> but no we did it for you know color correction sound design and um going into sundance we wanted to tell all the people who are fans of jenny and also fans from the short that we've been you know, sort of doing this project. No one knew where we went. That was sort of one of the interesting things in terms of my perspective is sort of watching the growth of the movie. Um, I knew it was premiering at Sundance. I didn't know much about it at that point. I was at South by Southwest and had hoped to see it, but wasn't able to make it to it. And then, you know, to see it come to SIF, it seems like you've really made your way through like the major progression of uh, independent film festivals throughout like the early part of the year. How has the response been as audiences are finally checking out? I mean, you said, you know, the short didn't get seen by a lot of people, though I tried to find it on the Internet. Mm -hmm. didn't have much uh, way in the way of success for that. Well, we want people to judge the feature on its own. Um, The short, we're really proud of it. and it's Special feature? Yeah, totally. Um, But for now, we would love for people to just see the the feature as as freestanding piece of art. And how's that been as the, you know, more and more festival audiences are seeing so it? We're getting close to the actual Dreamy. theatrical oh my release God. here. It's, I mean, it, uh, if, if it continues to, uh, I, every screening is unique and, uh, satisfying in its own way for us, I would say. Um, we've just had a real personal connection with our audiences and, uh, have many times had different people come up to us and say, my story is this. I'm so glad you told this story because now I feel that I can tell my story or I've never heard this story before and I feel, um, connected to it. You know, it's, it's been, um, gratifying, really gratifying. It's also fun to watch in the audience to be yeah. in the back and sort of be sneaky and see where the jokes are hitting. And I mean, it's a comedy and it's a, it has, you know, quiet moments as well but when an, an audience erupts in laughter um if there's nothing it's better very exciting yeah. nothing feels better than yeah. that. that i mean that's great to hear i i mean i can imagine a seattle audience being very receptive to the film but it mm-hmm. seems as you talk about like quiet moments this film definitely touches upon topics that i don't want to say are necessarily controversial or whatever but some people might not respond positively to all the time. What has it been like? Have you found audiences to be um, widely receptive of what you're saying? To I mean, have you found that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that people are more open-minded in this time frame or, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we've been living in a very nice bubble of film festivals and um, very warm audiences excited about this movie. And I think that we um, do understand that it's a subject that is controversial um, and women's rights are under attack and there are hot button issues um, but that's not the film that we made we made one woman's story and we told it in a romantic comedy genre because that's the genre genre mm-hmm. that we know and love so well 
um, so much. And we're not trying to uh, tell any, you know, everyone's story. Just, just Donna's. The most disturbing thing to me was actually how closely Gabby Hoffman looked like you yeah. in one sequence. And, like, there's, like, I think you're both in the kitchen. Like, I literally had to do a double take to tell which one was which. Wow. Well, that's um, a compliment. I think Gabby's very beautiful. Well, yeah, what was the process like in terms of, like, casting her as a friend? Because it, it was a great chemistry you two had. Oh, yeah. Well, I knew Gabby um, before we made the movie. And Gil wrote the part... Of Joey for Gabe Liedman, who is my uh, best friend and comedy partner. Um, and we knew Gabby and Gil thought Gabby would be good for it. And I wrote an email to Gabe and Gabby. Um, the title was, Will You Be in a Movie With Me? <laughs> and I sent them you the script. You CC'd me. Yeah, I CC'd <laughs> Gil. And, uh, and they both said yes. It was amazing. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Um, so the film is coming out in New York, June, June 6th. June 6th, L.A., June 6th, and then Seattle, June 20th. Uh, website for the film? We have one. And it is? <laughs> Obvieschildmovie.com. Okay. Excellent. Easy to remember. And you two have Twitters or anything that people should follow for more Yeah, we have, well, Gillian is at Gillian Hard G. Mine is at Jenny Slate. Then our Twitter is at ObviousChildMOV. And we have an Instagram also at Obvious Child Movie. Perfect. Thank you guys so much. And Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.